Welcome back. Today we're starting a new project in the workshop, the bookcase. I think this is the most exciting time of a project. You've got your thoughts together, you've done your plans, you've got your materials and you're ready to start. And it's great to see how it's going to evolve as you build these things up. So let's head to the computer, have a look at the overall design and we'll come back together and talk about how we're going to approach it. So this is the next project. I just call this the bookcase, but in reality, it's a combination, couple of cupboards, one on the right hand side, one on the left hand side, some drawer units and some shelving as well. It's finished off with a crown molding and these circles that you can see, they're going to be a clock, a temperature gauge and a humidity gauge. Useful stuff to have in the workshop. It's this on top of the existing sysport that we built on the last project and I think that will look pretty good. We're going to build it out of 8mm pine. Once again I'm using furniture boards so the same stuff that we built the, the sysport out of. It's going to be 2310mm in length and it's going to stand at 1290 to the smallest part of the crown. You can see the back is going to be Tungan Groove board we're using exactly the same material that we've used around the workshop and that's just to tie it all together looking at the side it's 265 millimeters deep and ignoring the crown molding 1190 millimeters in height it's basically a frame we're going to build one two three four sections frame the joinery is going to be predominantly sliding dovetails connecting this together so in terms of building it We'll put the sliding dovetails on the base, we'll put the sliding dovetails on the top and then we will connect the end panels. These will be dominoed and probably a pocket hole joinery just to keep them together. That won't be visible because we'll come from the outside where that's against the wall. And then we'll insert the vertical partitions with the sliding dovetails and then we can put in these fixed shelves and this bottom shelf that divides the bookcase from the drawer unit. Once this is constructed, these are going to be very strong joints, but while we're doing it, we're taking a lot of material out the centre of these panels. So we're going to find a way of strengthening the panels while we're using them and we'll talk about that when we actually get to the construction method. Use the LR32 system just to put some holes um, around here and then this will have a series of adjustable shelves inside as well. You can see the dimensions, 479mm high in each of the partitions. The outside cupboards are slightly narrower, 473mm as opposed to 637mm in the centre and you can see the overall length there of the bookcase. As we said, the back is going to be made of Tungan Groove Pine. We're going to route a 15mm rebate round the various panels and that just means that the back panels can now sit flush uh, into the unit. The front of the drawers are going to be raised panel constructions, so you're looking at the large drawers here. So 650mm long, 176mm high on the front panel. The styles will be 176mm and the rails will come in at 570mm allowing for two 10mm tenons at these joints here. Probably do a raised panel here, it's either a flat panel or a raised panel. I think I like the idea of a raised panel and we've sized up the size of the panel there as well. The drawer themselves will be basic box units. We're going to use um, dovetails, I think. Although I've shown through dovetails here, I think I'm probably going to use blind dovetails. And again, that's to give the Incra jig a little bit of a trial. And in the base, we'll just put some 12 millimeter ply and that will be rebated in as well. And again, you can see the dimensions, 637 millimeters for the drawer carcass, 150 millimeters high. The small drawers are exactly the same construction, just shorter, 490 millimeters long on the front panel, 474 millimeters on the inside carcass. Again, it will be blind dovetail construction and the front will once again be raised panel with styles and rails. We're following that design feature into the doors. So the doors again, raised panel construction, styles, rails, all 50 millimeter styles and rails throughout the design. And then we've got central panels here. I'm also putting a central rail onto this design. The doors are reasonably high, 992 millimeters getting on for a meter. And this will give it a bit of extra strength and just stop the door warping in use. 
the crown molding 180 millimeters high at the arch and 100 millimeters nominal everywhere else the curve itself we're going to make with the Festool MFS using it in trammel mold with the OF1400 router so that would be quite good at the moment I'm thinking of 840 millimeters um, in that arc but we'll see what happens once we get into the workshop the holes here as I said indicating a central clock a humidity gauge temperature gauge and I've not got those yet so once we get those we'll just simply bore those holes out that's it that's what we're building so it's a reasonably complicated build I did want to start to introduce some cabinet type joinery into this rather than just using screws dominoes because uh, that's more reflective of the work we're going to do when we're building custom furniture for people so it's good to put the power tools through the paces get to know them a bit better and see the sort of quality work we can produce with that let's get back to the workshop hope you found that useful so as always we've now created a version of the plans these are available on the website www.thewoodcrafter.com so go and get yourself a copy just a note if you're downloading a version of the plans that's got 1.0 there then i've not built anything from those plans that's the draft version of the plans it's straight off the computer it's a conceptual view it allows me to think about the sizes the shapes the joinery the assembly and so on and so forth but i haven't yet used those in anger i make those available so if you're following this series live week on week as we're building it up then you can sort of refer to the plans see what we're doing and play along with us so to speak if you want to use these plans in anger just have that word of caution that they are conceptual they're draft as i go through the build i make notes about any changes anything i would change uh, the dimensions the joinery techniques so on and so forth i update the plans and then upload the new version onto the website so you'll always get the latest version at the website if you wish at the back of the plans I'm now also including a cut list and the way I manage the cut list is I break it down into the sections we're going to build so we're going to build the frame first then we build the draw units and then we're going to build the doors and eventually finish off with the crown and for each of the components in those master assembly the sub assemblies if you will we break down the number of components we need and the size of them and that allows us to prep the stock ahead of the build I've also now introduced a layout diagram and this will show you against the materials that you buy how to lay each of the components out for maximizing the use of the material and therefore I also now provide a small table here on the cut list that will show you what you need to buy if you were to create the same thing there's no restrictions on the plans feel free to download them and use them you don't even need to sign up onto the website you can just follow a link and a go and get, grab yourself a copy of everything that we build inside the workshop talking about the workshop this is the first time we're going to use the modified workshop for a project and if you saw the january vlog you'll see that i've made some changes to the workshop as a direct result of building out the cis ports and building out the walls so i've got more space more productivity potential inside the workshop the first and the most obvious change is i've extended my working area here I brought in a second MFT3 table and rejigged the far end of the workshop so the tools are in different places than the original design but I wanted to get a longer run because I'm using more and more these large scale panels these two and a half meter long panels and all the boards I buy in rough cut are two and a half meter long as well so I wanted a space where I could work on those bringing the second MFT3 table in that's allowed me to have two cutting stations so a cutting station here where it would normally be on the MFT3 but now I can introduce a second cutting station here on the second MFT3 and I'll simply swap and change the rail depending on what I'm working on that means I can now trim off the end of boards two and a half meters long making sure that that trim is perfectly parallel to the edge of the board and that's going to be a huge time saver when I was doing the panels on the CISPOR, I was crawling around on the concrete floor, putting things on bits of wood, and the accuracy sort of suffered a little bit there. And, and I also didn't enjoy working on the floor. <laughs> so we changed that. Yeah, so you saw on the design that we're going to use quite a lot of dovetails, and I mentioned the INCRA system, I think, in that overview. So I'm now the proud owner of an INCRA LS positioner. 
Now the reason I went for this is its ability to batch out joinery such as box joints, such as dovetails, through dovetails, blind dovetails, double dovetails, double double dovetails. You can do it all on this system. So there's going to be a standalone video of how we set this up. We're going to make it portable so I can attach it to the MFT3 tables and I can also attach it to the CMS and we'll be using that throughout this project build to see how we get on. And the idea is that we're speeding up the production of fine quality furniture construction and therefore you'll notice that the design that we did for the bookcase a lot of dovetails sliding dovetails drawers are all going to be blind dovetails and so on and so forth so that'll be really exciting to see how that works out so that's it now for this episode next time we're going to start to break this down we'll use our cut list we'll use the incro we'll start to break this down with our extended working area and get the components ready for joinery Thanks for watching. See you next time.